Welcome to Twin Lakes Worship Center. Today, I want to speak to you on the subject of ready or not. You know, the true fact of the matter is this. One of these days, Jesus is going to return whether we're ready or not. The question is, are you ready or not? Today, I'm going to show you in the scripture exactly how you can know for certain whether you're ready or not. And that means more than just whether you're saved or not. So stay tuned and let's see what God's word says. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to be turning to the book of James, the book of James in chapter number five. I want to speak to you on the subject of ready or not. Ready or not. As you're turning, it is good to be back as I spent last week on vacation and got some uh, needed rest and some time off and enjoyed myself. Uh, one day while I was off, Mo called me and, and he said, you know, you need to get out and just enjoy some things. He said, why don't we go horseback riding? <laughs> I said, well, uh, I didn't want to go. But I'd never seen Mo on a horse, and I thought, this is going to be worth it. So I said, sure. He told me where to go, so I went and met him. I pulled up and got out, and here come Mo, and I ain't never seen nothing like it. He had a cowboy hat on. <laughs> he had a cowboy shirt on. He had a cowboy belt and buckle on. He had cowboy breeches and cowboy boots. I immediately started laughing. And he said, what are you laughing at? And I said, you ain't no cowboy. And he said, you don't know nothing. Watch this. And he hollered out, ready or not? And he took off running, and he run up behind this horse, jumped as high as he could. I couldn't believe it. Cleared the back of the horse, landed on that horse, and that horse took off running sideways. He was holding on, and I was impressed. He even got to, what do you call that when you're kicking them with your feet? He got to kicking that horse, and it just kept running, and then he started sliding. And he started coming down sideways. And I'll be honest with you, if that woman at Walmart hadn't come out and unplugged that thing, I don't think he'd ever made it. I don't believe he'd ever made it. I made it a good one because I wasn't here last week. Finish this statement for me. Ready or not, here I come. James chapter number 5. And verse number 7, listen to what it says here. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the farmer waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receive the early and latter rain. You know what that verse says? It says, ready or not, here I come. Jesus is saying to us every day, ready or not, get ready because I'm coming. He said, now you got to be patient because it's going to happen when you're least expected. That's exactly what the Bible says. He says it's going to happen when you're not prepared for it. That's what the Bible says. But he says you can bank on this one thing. I am coming and when I return, you better be ready. Because ready or not, I'm coming. Now let me ask you something. We all know that. We believe that. We know the scriptures. And we know that Jesus is coming. We know that we ought to be ready. But what exactly does it mean to be ready? You see, there's a whole lot more to it rather than just whether or not you're saved or lost. There's a lot more to it. Now, when he returns, granted, whether you're saved or lost is going to be the biggest decision. That's what's going to matter the most because at that moment, he's going to separate the goat from the sheep. He's going to separate the tares from the wheat. And those that are his, he's going to take with him to heaven. And those that are left behind will be facing an eternity of hell. So absolutely, that is essential and, and the number one most important thing. But there is more to it than just being saved if you want to be truly ready when Jesus returns. Dear friend, I promise you this. Jesus is coming. 
I promise you this. Hey, I don't know much. I'm pretty dumb. I'm not very intelligent, but I'm smart enough to know that the Word of God is true. And over and over and over, God has told us, Jesus is going to return. You better be ready. So how can you know for sure what is it you need to be getting ready knowing that Jesus is going to return? Well, fortunately, James goes on and he tells us exactly what we need to know because he said, be ready, I'm going to return, be patient, I'm coming. This is what you need to have ready. Look what he said in verse number 8. He says, be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth near. He said, here's how you can know if you're ready or not. And that is whether or not you have established your heart. Established your heart. Now, what does it mean to establish your heart? That's kind of a hard concept to grasp. An established heart. Well, let's just back up and look at it in in terms and in a way that would make sense to us. And that is this. What is an established business? Now, that's something we can all relate to. We've all been to the Holy Land, better known as Walmart. (laughs) We know what an established business is. When you look at a business that is established, one of the first things you know about that business is this. It is profitable for what it's doing. No established business loses money. In fact, to be an established business, it has to be one that gives a return on the original investment. That's what makes it an established business. That whatever was invested in it, that business is returning that which you've invested in it and then some. Dear friend, let me tell you how you can know if your heart's established. And that's whether or not your life is giving God a return on what he's invested in it. Whether or not what he has given to you, what he has blessed you with, what he has guided you through, that you're using that and it is giving great dividends and returns unto the Lord. That's how you have an established heart. An established business is profitable. An established business is one that is matured. It is one that is solid. It is one that is able to handle the good times as well as the bad times. An established business has lasted long enough and secure enough that whether the economy's up or whether the economy's down, whether sales are up or whether sales are down, whether times are good or whether times are bad, the business don't move. It maintains through whatever storm may come. Dear friend, let me tell you, if you're going to have an established heart and be ready to face the Lord when He comes, then you've got to have that established heart in a way that you have matured, that you're solid, that you are able to handle the good times as well as the bad times. And dear friend, let me remind you of this. I have seen just as many, if not more, Christians bite the dust over good times as well as I have bad times. You see, sometimes God blesses us with something. God has been their priority, and God blesses them and blesses them, and then all of a sudden the blessing becomes their priority, and God has to take the blessing away because God says, I'm a jealous God, and I will not share my glory with anything or anyone. So to be a mature and established heart, you've got to be able to withstand the good times as well as the bad times. You've got to know when the bad times come that you can just continue to praise Him through the storm and that He's going to be faithful and get you through whatever it is you're facing and that He's got a plan for you and He only wishes good for you. Only a mature, established heart can reason through that and stay focused on Him. An established business is one that's profitable. It's one that is mature. It's one that has a good name. It's one that has a good name. Now, you, we like to say, I don't care what nobody thinks about me. Yes, you do. Don't lie on top of it. 
And no matter how big the business is, you let some bad publicity get out about them, and they'll be doing everything they can to fix it, won't they? It don't matter how big the movie star is, bad publicity gets out, and boy, they're in a scramble to try to rescue it and save it. You know why? Because they have learned how important it is to have a good name. That is all that you are. That is your character. That is your morals. That is your witness. That is everything about you. And if you're going to have an established heart, dear friend, listen to me. You've got to have a good name. You've got to have a name that you're able to witness to others, that able, people are able to look at you and say, there's what I need to be doing more of and less of this. We've got to be matured and established. We've got to be those that have good witnesses if we're going to be ready, truly ready, to meet the Lord when He returns. He says in that verse, to always remember that the coming of the Lord draweth near. Folks, I believe, I truly do, that the Lord's return is near. I believe it. There's too many things in the Bible that's adding up. There's too many things that says has to happen and this stuff is pointing together. And what I know right now is more than ever before, more than any other people in history, we need to be sure that we are ready to meet Him because it could be sooner rather than later. He says to be ready, we've got to first of all have established hearts. We've got to be profitable Christians. We've got to be matured Christians. We've got to be Christians with a good witness and a good name, reaching others for Christ. He said this is how you know you have an established heart and that you're ready. But he goes on and says this, look in verse 9. He says not only should you have an established heart, but listen to this. He says Grudge not or murmur not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. He says, here's how you can know if you're ready. He says, it's coming. You better be ready. We don't know exactly when. We don't know exactly what the time will be. But he says, it's near. And he said, to be ready, to be right, you've got to have that established heart. But then you've also got to be one that grudges not or murmurs not against one another. You see, you cannot be ready to face the Lord. Now, you listen to this closely. You are not ready to face the Lord. Let me say it that way. If you are one that talks about puts down and tears apart every person you know. You're not ready. I assure you, you're not ready. You may think you are, but one thing you better remember is that he says this, the judge is standing right behind that door. And not only is he listening to everything that's going on, not only is he seeing everything that is going on, but the Bible says he's taking notes as well. And that when the time comes that he walks through that door, every single one of us will then stand judgment for whether or not we were ready or not. And he says, here's how you can know you're ready. Murmur not, grudge not against one another. Be the kind of person that realizes that our job as a Christian is to encourage one another, to lift one another up, to strengthen one another, to love one another. Well, yeah, but Brother Jeremy, them people over there, they're doing this, they're doing that and all. Who do you think you are? Do you think you're so clean that you're able to judge another? Now, I want to clear something up because some people have taken this so far the other way. And that is, anytime anybody does anything wrong, now they say, don't judge me. Well, I'm not. I'm not going to. Because God's going to. But I also have a personal responsibility because of my relationship with Christ that I am to examine whether or not what you're doing is right or wrong based upon God. Now you go on and do it if you want to. You're the one that's going to have to stand judgment for it, not me. 
So when the Bible says, judge not, lest ye be judged, here's what he's talking about. Don't you ever get yourself to a position where you become the jury judge and executioner over what everybody else is doing. Here's what the Bible says you ought to do. You ought to look at what it is they're doing. Determine based upon the Word of God, not your idea, whether or not that's right or wrong. And then you ought to encourage them, love them, and pray for them. And be a witness. For what is right. To do what is right. And you just let God. Be the judge as to what needs to be done. Only eternity will show. What judgmental Christianity. The damage it's done. Throughout all the years. Where it goes through and it picks out and points out people that are doing this and doing that. And, well, you know, they got it divorced. Well, so did I. And I got news for you. That guy preached last Sunday did too. How about that guy, huh? Huh? You know what the difference is? We're going to let God judge us, and we're going to let God judge you. And to the best of our ability, we're going to keep serving God and loving people. And God says, that's how you'll know that you're ready. That's how you'll know that you're ready. Is that you murmur not. That you grudge not against one another. He says, be ready. Because I'm coming. He said, the only way you're going to know if you're ready is if you have an established heart. The only way you're going to know if you're ready is if you grudge not and murmur not against one another. But then he says, lastly, look at verse 10. He says, here's another way to know if you're ready. He said, take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. He said, here's how you can know that you're ready. The established heart, grudge not, but then you also have to receive the prophets as an example. Receive the prophets. Now, now what is James talking about? Because the prophets he's talking about were thousands of years ago. How are we going to receive somebody that ain't here? How are we going to look to them for an example that aren't here? Well, you see, that word prophets bears with it an amazing thing. Because that is exactly who God used to be his instrument to write this blessed book. You see, here's what James was saying. He said, if you want to be ready, dear brother, you need to take the word of God and not only hear it, but apply it. You need to take the Word of God and do what it says do. Don't do what it says don't do. And receive what God is telling you you need. Now I'm going to tell you there's only two ways that you can receive the prophets. There's only two ways. And that is by listening and receiving the preaching of the Word of God. It's commanded by the Word itself. Forsake ye not the assembling of yourselves together. It's commanded. When your church is meeting and the Word of God is being preached, you ought to be there. The second way, and I'll say this, one will not work without the other. And that is by a daily intake of the Word yourself. Now, I realize you're busy. I realize you've got a lot going on. I realize there's important things on your shelf that you've got to deal with. But friend, I assure you there ain't nothing in your life more important than you spending some time alone with God in His Word. There's not one thing, not one thing more important than that. He said, receive the prophets. If you want to be ready, you got to receive the prophets. And the way you receive them is through preaching and through the reading of the Word of God. Now, here's a spoiler alert. You ready? I'm going to tell you what you're going to read when you open this up. The first thing you're going to read is that for those of us that are saved, it's going to tell you how you ought to live. It's going to tell you what's right and what's wrong. If you listen to society, dear friend, I promise you, you're going to get so far off track. You're going to get so far off track. This world is not even closely pointing in the vicinity of the direction that God's Word says we ought to be. Not even close. 
It's amazing how far away we're getting away from God's Word. It seems like every generation is getting further and further away. That's sad. And I'm going to tell you whose fault it is. It's ours. Yesterday I told Laney, I said, Laney, you wear these glasses and you'd look like John Lennon. She rolled her eyes and said, who's that, some drug dealer? <laughs> How could somebody be alive today <laughs> and not know who John Lennon is? <laughs> but I'll tell you something sadder than that. How can people right here in the presence of this church be alive and not know what's right and what's wrong. And I'm going to tell you how. I'm going to tell you how it's possible. You ain't spending any time in this book. You see, to be ready is the difference in when Jesus returns being filled with excitement and peace and joy, knowing that a lifetime of efforts is fixing to be rewarded versus being ashamed and afraid that judgment has finally come. That's the difference. Be ready. Or not, he's coming. As the saved people, we need to be living and doing what God's word says to be ready. And dear friend, as a lost man here today, you listen to me closely. The number one most important thing that you've got to do to get ready is you've got to know that you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Because at the moment that He returns, when that sky is rolled back like a scroll, and Jesus returns, and all the dead in Christ shall be raised, yes. and we that are alive and remain shall be changed in an instant, and we shall go up together to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Yes. At that moment, if you've not received Christ, it's too late. It's too late. Ready or not, Jesus is coming. And it could be before this service is over. You better get ready. Well, thank you for staying tuned. And I hope the message today has spoke to you. You know, the most important thing to know that you're ready is, number one, to know that you're saved. But beyond that, we also must know that we're ready, that we're living, that we're doing the things that God would have us do so that when we meet him face to face, we can meet him with confidence rather than shame. I hope the message has helped you in some way today. And as always, I'd like to invite you to come out to worship with us at Twin Lakes Worship Center. Our worship times are at 10 o'clock on Sunday, 7 o'clock on Wednesday. We'd love to have you. God bless you and you have a great week.